uh, we have seen from uh, today's session uh, till yet that uh, what are the troubleshooting steps uh, uh, at least how to troubleshoot the issue how or how the flowchart we can perform what are the actions uh, need to be taken for some hardware related issues what are the tools and uh, uh, the documentations we have to refer uh, for any type of fault which we are uh, all identifications we are not exactly known. so uh, uh, what are the nodes are uh, interconnected to each other or how you can log in on your site uh, through your local bts manager Uh, and uh, the rest of it, how, how uh, So these are the points we have covered uh, till yet. Morning. Uh, now we will see uh, uh, in the further session about uh, some of uh, the uh, the live. Uh, 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 sorry, live. So, uh, what about the shooting step for my long sites we can take? What are the information we can grab from them? So, uh, the RF basic is basically uh, related with your RF related issues. Uh, uh, some of the important definitions I have mentioned here in order to understand the RF uh, uh, related issues. First of all, uh, uh, you must aware about these basic uh, definitions. Uh, that is your impedance. If we are talk about the impedance, uh, it's the RF version of resistance. Or uh, the, uh, another example of this uh, the resistance, uh, you can say uh, impedance matching. What is the meaning of impedance matching? Uh, that is the uh, making sure the whole system is identical electrical. So, uh, uh, what is the what is the meaning of here, here impedance matching? Uh, so, in order to in order to transfer the power uh, uh, maximum power transfer from one uh, any to another any, there should be a proper impedance matching between them. So, the resistance the resistance of the uh, the, the uh, particular any should be uh, identical with the uh, the neighbor any to to which we are going to transfer the maximum power. So uh, this is the this is the actually maximum power transfer theory says that the, the resistance or impedance matching should be if they are identical in order to transfer the maximum power. So what does it mean the impedance matching? The reflection the RF signal is reflected back to where it is originated. So the result from impedance mismatch it is the result of impedance mismatch. If, uh, if there is an imp impedance mismatching between uh, two, uh, between two neighboring nodes. So the RF power will get reflected uh, to where it is originated. For example, if uh, you are trying to transmit a power from the site and uh, uh, the most of the powers are getting reflected from your antenna uh, back to the transmitter, so uh, that your impedance matching is not uh, proper uh, with uh, between your uh, antenna and your air interface. That means the power you are trying to transmit uh, from the BTS or your antenna is not properly uh, radiating to the air. Uh, so it means, uh, it means there is an impedance mismatching between your antenna and your air interface. So uh, th th there are lots of these things uh, 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 you need to be just cross verified. Uh, so that uh, means uh, you can understand. VSW uh, RN return loss, uh, the measurements of signal energy that is reflected back to where it is originated. So uh, you can check this VSWR, uh, uh, this is a very common fault uh, you, can, uh, you can see in your day to day activity. So what is the meaning of your VSWR? It is a voltage standing wave ratio or the return loss in the other way you can say that. So what is the power you are going to transmit to the air interface? Some of the powers are getting reflected from the antenna and it may cause us to create some interference uh, with your uh, transmit power. So this is a very critical point on day to day basis you are seeing in your activities. So what is the meaning of this VSWR? Exertion loss. So some, uh, some RF energy uh, lost as heat and energy as the signal passes through the feeder. 
so uh, it clearly shows in order to minimize the insertion loss you always try to uh, minimize the length of your rf feeder because uh, uh, once uh, your rf energy is moving towards uh, the rf cable some of the energy has been lost in terms of your insertion loss so always try to minimize the length of the cable so that uh, your uh, uh, insertion loss can be minimized as as well as possible so these are the some basic terms uh, you must aware uh, because uh, uh, if uh, there is a really a uh, critical issue related to your insertion loss return loss vswr it might be possible the services will be shut down so uh, uh, return loss is uh, just uh, we have seen of the feeder varies measure the impedance match of the system return loss measure the return or reflected power of the system which is the relative measurement of power is always measured in dvm or uh, uh, so this is just equivalent to your uh, vswr uh, so try to try to always resolve the rf related issues uh, for a proper services uh, cable loss or insertion loss of the feeder is actual amount of energy loss that is observed by the feeder so this is all the, all the basic terms related with your uh, rf concerns so uh, uh, we should uh, these points get in mind in order to troubleshoot if uh, uh, we are just dealing with the uh, rf related issues so the vswr problem uh, we will see some of the critical faults related with uh, your uh, uh, rf related issues so the first uh, is uh, mm -hmm. first and most common issue is uh, vswr so as i explained you earlier what is the vswr and uh, uh, what is the reason of the with this VSWR? Some of the transmitting power is getting reflected uh, back to the transmitter, uh, which is actually causing some interference uh, with the transmitting power, and it can be measured in the DPM. There are certain uh, there are certain saturation of this VSWR values in our system. So if it is a uh, uh, happening or uh, due to this VSWR our services are impacting so uh, we have to identify that uh, what is the major or uh, major uh, major issues uh, with our system and how we can resolve this uh, VSWR alarms so, so here we, we can see there are alarms uh, VSWR alarms present in, in your WDKS site and uh, the, what is the source of this uh, alarm that is your antenna line AP is your source of alarm so uh, you can see here uh, uh, in, uh, in your FRGF module your antenna line 3 this is your antenna line 3 and this is your RX diversity so this is having some VSWR critical alarm uh, what does it mean uh, the power which is uh, going to transmit from this port are getting reflected from the connected antenna and this is making some problem uh, or making some standing waves at a certain point so that our transmitting power is not radiated properly so this is the actual meaning of your vswr alarm okay so uh, you can see in the uh, uh, next slide that uh, you this is the this is the your locationist network WCB or BPS site manager online help or you can check uh, these alarms meaning with the help of uh, some documentation or some any uh, uh, you can download from the nulls and you can check cross verify the fault meaning uh, that means uh, what is the meaning of the radio model 60 watt RRH. Uh, has detected a VSWR value exceeding the defined level. So what is the meaning of this VSWR? There is a certain yeah. limits we have defined in our system. So if the, these standing waves or the reflected power is exceeding that particular saturation level, so the VSWR uh, alarm will be pop up in our system. So meaning the VSWR has exceeded the alarm threshold. Uh, there are uh, usable tunable VSWR alarm threshold. That means uh, if we can set certain uh, saturation level. Uh, the, as per the standard is around uh, minor is 1.9 and major is 2.6. Once uh, our uh, standing wave or our reflective power is uh, will be greater than uh, your 2.6, then uh, uh, VSWR will be uh, generated in our system. 
So tuning of the alarm threshold require antenna line supervision uh, license. That is your band 907 license feature is required in order to tune your VSW <laughs> threshold uh, in a particular uh, uh, sector or particular antenna line device. So uh, this license is required to tune our uh, VSWR alarm. So here, here you can see uh, the VSWR, how you can monitor, for example, this is the VSWR problem continued and uh, uh, antenna line VSWR threshold values. Uh, we have, uh, uh, we can start uh, and find out uh, through that uh, VSWR uh, uh, tuning feature, which require the ex exact license and which will tell you the upper and lower saturation of the VSWR values. So, uh, in order to find out this exact value, uh, you need to go to the uh, that VSWR threshold option under the test. Uh, so, you will find one option that is your VSWR threshold, and you can start tuning. So, uh, so uh, so that you can just uh, find out the minimum and maximum uh, threshold value of your VSWR according to your uh, means RF cable. Okay. And, uh, so start tuning option is during the VSWR tuning procedure, the BPS will stop sending VSWR alarm to the network and any recovery actions related to VSWR alarms are discarded. First you will perform this VSWR value tuning, uh, the BPS actually stops sending VSWR alarm to the RNC or your OMS because this time some the BPS is doing some auto recovery action, so it will not uh, show the exact VSWR alarm on that time. And recovery action related to VSWR alarms are discarded. Okay, so at that time, no recovery action will will take place, and all the VSWR alarm related with this uh, action has been discarded by the BPS. So once you will confirm uh, the VSWR tuning. So the next option for the selected antenna filter, the system calculates the minor and major threshold value of the VSWR points. Okay, so the system will tell you what is the minimum and maximum value of the um, saturation value of the VSWR for that particular antenna line device. And you can find there is a antenna under uh, option, uh, there is a tune VSWR threshold. You can tune it and uh, the VSWR threshold value will be uh, according to the test. So during the VSWR tuning procedure, the BTS stop sending VSWR faults to the network and the recovery actions related to VSWR faults are discarded. So under this antenna option, you can go to the tune VSWR threshold and uh, uh, you can check the upper and lower threshold value of that particular antenna line device. If the your VSWR uh, uh, value is higher than your saturation value, then your definitely VSWR will come up. Then uh, you need to check it out uh, where where is the uh, with, with at which point where most of the power is getting reflected, and you need to correct that. Okay, and definitely if your uh, saturation value is higher than the value which is currently existing, so your uh, VSWR will automatically go. This is the a problem. Uh, you can easily uh, check it out. Uh, the default values are displayed when uh, when uh, tuning the VSWR threshold. Uh, so exceeding the major alarm threshold leads to the critical alarm severity. In case there is no antenna line measurement device available, the VSWR threshold value can be, can be used to measure the actual VSWR value within the range of 1.5 to 3. This is the actual uh, uh, case. Uh, you can uh, after after performing this, this test, uh, the saturation value uh, can be automatically set. And if uh, the VSWR uh, values is still more than your saturation value, the alarm will pop up in your system. Otherwise, it will. Uh, For example, actually assuming the actual VSWR value is below 3.5, the alarm threshold can be increased stepwise until the alarm disappears. So this is the scenario means uh, this is the basic uh, purpose of your VSWR testing. If uh, still uh, your VSWR values uh, below uh, your 3.5, the alarm threshold can be increased stepwise until the alarm is See here you can see that the critical alarms has been this stepwise the, the value can increase 
and uh, your critical alarm will automatically go on. Since the critical alarm was active, we use the laser alarm level step by step until the critical alarm disappears and the minor alarm disappears. But you need to definitely look into the matter, guys. You have to resolve this VSWR minor alarm as well. Because uh, this is the, the this tuning test can uh, only be tell you about the saturation level of your uh, what is the saturation minimum and maximum saturation of your VSWR. This is the options you can check your RF relative consumption. So uh, the next slide uh, will tell you much more about the VSWR faults. So the VSWR threshold, uh, choosing the antenna, tune VSWR threshold menu items, open the tune VSWR threshold dialog box where a button can tune VSWR alarm threshold values or antenna filters inside RF module. So uh, note you need to have a valid license for VSWR threshold tuning feature, antenna line VSWR threshold values. So this is the license feature, you always require a license to perform this action. So you need to cross verify with your network or whether uh, the license is available or not uh, uh, before performing this VSWR uh, tuning. Uh, so this is the, the options I've written. What we have uh, just spoken about in the previous slide. So now uh, uh, we have seen some RF related stuffs also uh, some of the because I'm just covering uh, some of the uh, troubleshooting steps uh, from each uh, each one of the uh, possible uh, uh, faults so that everything is covered under this session. So now uh, we have just covered uh, hardware related issues, some software related issues and uh, now there is some example about the Software related issues. Uh, what is the uh, might be the possibility, and what we, uh, you, you need to understand what what could be the uh, issue which is related with the software as well. So this is the one example I have included here, uh, which, uh, which we have found uh, related with the software bug. So note, uh, this, uh, you need to just read this uh, sentence. This is just an example for a known and documented software bug. In the latest software release, this issue may not be existent. So it is possible uh, this software bug has been uh, 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 resolved in the latest software. But if uh, uh, this is the means, uh, you need to understand what are the possibilities, what are the type of software that may be possible. So uh, for example, this is the uh, uh, 2 plus 2 plus 2 configuration, uh, TGPTS configuration. Uh, uh, wh what was the issue we have uh, faced previously? Uh, the problem was sale remains in sleep mode in a 2 2 2 configuration with FRGF RF module. When locking the cells with the lower LCR ID, that is your local cell uh, group, ID 1, 2, 3, then the cells with the higher ID 4, 5, 6 stays in sleep mode. Sleeping cells does not allow any new calls or handovers. So what is the meaning? This is the frequency channel allocation for your all PG cells. And this is the local cell group. So what was the problem says? When we lock the upper three cells having lower cell ID, that is your 1, 2, 3. So rest of the higher cell ID cells will be going into a sleep mode. That means if it is still in unlock, but it will not carry any traffic, uh, uh, these cells will uh, will not take any new calls or handover calls. But it is the rest, the three cells are working fine. But we have on. Okay, but these uh, lower three cells are still working into the sleep does not report any alarms. So what is the meaning that uh, uh, the mm -hmm. VTS is properly working, there is no alarm on site. The only what we did, what we did, we did on the lock the upper three cells which is having a lower cell. So so this is the scenario. So how to this is the software but we found the what was the workaround if the cells with the ARFCN are to be blocked 
Uh, while the local cells with ARFCN remain operational, the BKS has to be decommissioned according to the procedure. So once uh, we found this issue, uh, if uh, until unless we commission the site according to this table, uh, our site will not be So this is the software bug, and uh, uh, for the software bug issues, uh, you can't do much anything from your end. You don't need to be panic there. For, so uh, if if you are finding uh, you don't need to take too much of uh, panic about the software bugs. Uh, if you are not getting any critical alarm, any service affecting related alarms, or any kind of alarms in system, but still, uh, if some of the your cells or sites are going in zero calls, so uh, you need to first do the troubleshooting from your end. You need to check all the configuration details. Check all the hardware alarms. Uh, if there is no criticality, you can find out. Uh, so definitely, you need to report to the fault management and just uh, yeah, this case is with the uh, R&D team who is always dealing with the software part. Okay, so uh, this is the um, one symptom because it's not always the problem uh, 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 denoted at our end. That uh, that is. A, uh, not always uh, we have to troubleshoot and resolve the issue. There might be some issue with the software, and uh, it is possible to resolve by the R&D itself. So definitely it will provide you the solution. And uh, for this solution, uh, the R&D team has suggested one new software release uh, under which uh, this problem has got resolved. And uh, if uh, in your current network, if we are finding this type of issues, uh, so you need to just upgrade the software on the latest. So uh, these are the software compatibility problems. Uh, some uh, alarms you can see related with this uh, software version mismatch between modules units. So what is the what is the solution for these kind of alarms? If you are getting some software version mismatch between modules and units, so you need to understand what is the basic problem behind this. Uh, actually, guys, I as I go, your side is having a different type of uh, sub modules. Uh, that is your uh, transmission sub module, your uh, uh, system module extension sub module, your system module, power supply sub module. So, uh, the software version mismatch uh, between modules alarm is always coming when your one of the sub module is not a software compatible exactly. Okay. So, uh, day to day, uh, the R&D has released some of the new software. Each software is having some correction over the previous one. But it is possible that some of the some uh, older hardware or some modules is not software compatible with uh, uh, your latest release. So what are the uh, what are the uh, what are the things need to be checked uh, for uh, to resolve this type of alarms? Your are all software uh, your all uh, some modules uh, hardware should be compatible with your latest software. Release. So, for example, I have mentioned this uh, one example for you. Uh, what is the possibility of your software version mismatch alarm? The Plexi release one system module is currently delivered with your Win 4.0 software. The release one is your FSMB uh, system module, and it is always come with your uh, Win 4.0 uh, uh, Win 4.0 software. If the operator wants to activate a Win 5. Software release into their live network, it can't update software to the master system module without FPM unit supported by Win 4.0 software. If suppose your uh, operator is now want to activate the Win 5.0 software due to uh, some advantages, but uh, your, if uh, some of the FPM uh, some modules are not supported uh, with your 4.0 software because it is not compatible with your 4, Win 4.0 uh, software then this software version is which alarm will come. So uh, this is the actual uh, just uh, thing I just I want to explain you. This means that the, your FTHA, FTIB unit and release one system model with Win 4.0 are not compatible because Win 4.0 does not recognize FTHA, FTIB units. So this is the reason uh, your alarm will come up. So what, what you can do for this kind of alarms? Uh, either, either you can just uh, uh, change your uh, uh, your uh, modules uh, as per the software compatibility, uh, because this alarm will uh, uh, will come up. Your services uh, might be degraded or not, but definitely your alarm will not go on until unless 
each and every sub modules will be uh, compatible uh, compatible with the latest software so uh, for example if you will change your uh, 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 system module in uh, with a recent system Resolve the alarm, or you need to check the software compatibility. So here I have just mentioned uh, some of the modules with their software compatibility. So the FTI, EB, or or you can if you can either use one of the transmission sub module with uh, this. Uh, so you can also resolve if you are still using the Win 4.0 software. But if you are going to upgrade. Uh, with Win uh, 5.0 software, so definitely a transmission uh, 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 sub module will be FTIB, FTHA, and your system modules uh, should uh, come into the release new hardware. So this is the, the type of so software compatibility you must know about this uh, uh, software compatibility uh, structure so that uh, you can resolve this type of uh, uh, alarms from the system. So this is about uh, I said there are two workarounds available. Flexi uh, uh, release one system model with can be upgraded to uh, together with FTM units supported by 4.0 software uh, can be upgraded to uh, together with FTM unit and a separate single flexi release one system model can be upgraded to when just by using it temporary as an extension system model to enable access to the system. So this is the way around. So here are some of the important uh, slide uh, for you for the day-to-day -day troubleshooting. Uh, these are the type of alarms I have mentioned in the right comment call uh, uh, The very common alarms you can face in your day-to-day -day troubleshooting, and what are the parameters you need to check uh, for uh, if those alarms are coming and your site is not coming up or your site is not coming. Integrated to the end, uh, your site is not coming on here. Yeah. This is the important uh, uh, slide for you. Uh, for example, I am just going to take one by one. Uh, if uh, this is the alarm uh, you are facing in your site end, your RNC BTS signaling link failure and no connection between RNCs, ICSU, and BTS. So your BTS state will be your BTS configured. What does it mean? BTS configured that means. So you have configured your IP details and your UPS is powered on, but it is not able to communicate with the RNC due to some configuration mismatch. Okay, so this alarm will come up. The RNC BTS signaling then failure, no connection between RNC and ICSU and BTS. So the IUB interface is uh, control plane is not working. So what you need to check uh, in your uh, TRS configuration parameter. You need to go to the SCTP subnet and check the SCTP subnet is proper or not. Because each and every SCTP, this is the uh, I think trans uh, SCTP layer protocol, and uh, uh, which is what you want IUB interface for uh, complicated control information. So uh, you need to just check your SCTP subnet uh, option in the PRX commissioning file. And uh, please check uh, it is as per the planning or not. Uh, you can you need to cross verify your SCTP subnet with the uh, given planning data. The second uh, uh, alarm is your RNC BTS signaling link failure, uh, CNPAP and DNPAP not operational. So this is the common control protocol of your IUB interface, CNPAP and DNPAP. So uh, once if this alarm is coming in your system, again the BTS state uh, will not come as a BTS integrated to the end because uh, still your uh, control plane is not working on the IUD interface. So the minimum SCTP port uh, parameter you need to check uh, uh, on your uh, TRX configuration file. Uh, uh, either uh, the SCTP IP as well as your minimum SCTP port. Uh, because these ports uh, should be identical at the RNC and your site end. Uh, so either you can check at uh, this parameter at your site end and also uh, check at your RNC end as well. Uh, because this is the parameter should be common at both ends to uh, work with it. 
third one alarm is you have no UDP port dependencies between BTS and RNC on the relevant for firewall port mirror. So uh, this is the no, uh, no effect, this is not a service affecting alarm, and but still if you want to resolve this alarm, uh, you need to check the UDP port details and it should be matched uh, as per the means planning data given by the planning. Uh, now the next one is no IUV communication between uh, uh, BTS and RNC. It is again the BTS configured state. You need to check the TRS internet IP address. Again, we are, uh, the, if your uh, BTS is not uh, coming integrated to that, uh, some of the because uh, the IP layer on the IP layer, you need to check uh, the transport internet address in the TRS commission file. Uh, the next one is uh, if you are uh, on them, uh, IUB is disconnected, means on the IUB interface, if your on them connection is disconnected. And uh, uh, there are two scenarios uh, if your on them is connect, uh, showing disconnected and still you are able to log in into the site. So check the, the BTS uh, ID on the site end uh, uh, because the BTS ID, ID should be identical in the uh, RNC single RNC and it should be identical at both end the BTS and the site end. So if you are able to log in the site remotely and still your DCM connection is showing down so you need to check the BTS ID is proper and the application IP page uh, uh, there is a IP the TRS IP should be configured on the management uh, plane uh, uh, column. So this is the two possibility if you are uh, able to log in into the site remotely, but uh, you just take your own them connection is down. But there is one another scenario uh, if you are also not able to log in the site remotely and your own them connection is down because you can't check anything remotely. Definitely you have, you you have to go to the site locally and uh, troubleshoot that issue. So, so if still your uh, uh, DCNS connection is showing down and you are also not able to log in. So these are the cases uh, you need to check the TRS IP address in the uh, BTS IP address in your TRS commission file. Uh, apart from this, uh, this all action has to be taken on the uh, BTS end. Uh, much more troubleshooting we can perform on the RNC point of view as well. So this is uh, uh, not a platform to just cover up all the X steps taken from the RNC end. Uh, we can, uh, but just in a short, I am uh, just explaining you. Uh, for uh, for these type of issues, uh, you can also just check the ping response of your IP packets from the RNC end as well as your site end. So uh, the ping test is an option through which uh, at least uh, you can check your IUV media status. Uh, where is the, uh, uh, is there any latency or, uh, or is there any jitter you are observing into the media or is there any problem with the control plane, your trace, uh, the, your IP packet can reach up to which node. So there are many types of other troubleshooting we can perform uh, to just uh, uh, find out the exact problem uh, but this is the scenario just I am telling you about the particular alarms okay related with this is all all alarms are related with your uh, flexi multi ratio side this is not an alarm related with any RNC this is the alarms are only related with your WBTS side so you have to concentrate on these alarms so definitely uh, you will also see some troubleshooting steps in the RNC troubleshooting training as well but as of now, uh, this is the alarms you need to uh, remember uh, and for troubleshooting purposes you can be used day by day. So the, beat, uh, the, the, the no alarm reporting to RNC but remote connection works. So I have already explained there is a scenario if you can still log in the site remotely but the OFM connection is down. You need to check the BTS ID at both end, uh, RNC as well as uh, uh, your site end. If there is a mismatch, you can just uh, make it configured as per the RNC and your uh, uh, point of connection uh, allowed and gone. Uh, so some clock problems. Uh, so uh, just I, we are just covering most of the problems uh, you can you guys can face on day to day activity. I know because when I was on field, uh, these are the very much uh, repeated problem I have faced. 
so i know that uh, these are the most common problems uh, uh, you are uh, you are currently facing with your day to day troubleshooting so the clock problems uh, we have seen in uh, in the yesterday our uh, block diagram so each each system module uh, is ha having its in internal clock uh, uh, which need to be set or synchronized with some external sources uh, but once uh, what uh, once this synchronization will not happen properly some of the synchronization or clock related alarms come into the system uh, which need to be uh, uh, actually troubleshoot uh, from our end. So, uh, uh, guys, there are uh, several possibilities we have seen uh, yesterday. What are the uh, what are the options we can use to just synchronize our internal clock of the system module with the external sync source? Uh, we have seen the timing over packet kind of top servers. Uh, you can use your GPS. Uh, uh, we can use the external uh, PDH uh, uh, link uh, for the synchronization. We can also use the Ethernet synchronization. Uh, so there are lots of possibilities to to uh, to, uh, to make it tune our internal clock of the system module. Uh, but if it's still there is a problem, you need to troubleshoot. Uh, uh, most probably. Uh, this is the transmission related alarm, but uh, definitely sometimes uh, due to improper configuration or setting, uh, even uh, the transmission is okay, but uh, we are not, uh, uh, we, uh, we did not configure our uh, clock setting properly, due to which uh, these uh, problems or these alarms are always uh, uh, means activated in our system. But we don't know how to resolve them, how to, which settings uh, we need to check. Uh, what are the settings we need to check? So this is the due to this lack of information, uh, our uh, the alarms will uh, uh, updated in this system. So a possible synchronization source we have seen the BTS master clock uh, needs a high accurate external reference clock for synchronization. A long term accuracy requirement of the reference clock is 0 0.015 ppm according to the PGP specification. So this is the uh, specification as per the 3GPP standard uh, reference clock uh, accuracy is zero point zero one five ppm. And what are the external sync source we can use to synchronize our internal clock? Is uh, your TDM transmission? That is your TDH E1, T1, JP1, or SDH ST1. ERC external reference clock from GPS. Ethernet transport interface uh, with the top timing over packet and the Ethernet transport interface is synchronized. So these are the options that we can uh, still do so to synchronize our internal work of the system module. So this is the internal uh, architecture of your uh, system module through which uh, you can just uh, make uh, your internet clock uh, uh, synchronized. Uh, this is the external source you can see through the FTM card, FTM sub module you can take uh, some external source input and uh, uh, just uh, uh, the FTM card will provide the 2048 as a, a reference clock for your internal system module. Here you can see the divider. Uh, further you can use this uh, clock for some other uh, equipment to be get synchronized. Uh, for example, your two system modules are connected to each other, so you can just provide the reference signal from this uh, divider to the other uh, BTS as well. You can also provide the reference clock to the RF module RMH as well. So this is the actual uh, manual tuning you can also perform. Uh, basically, uh, what is the uh, problem? Uh, you know, because uh, you can also set this uh, internal clock as a uh, manually. But uh, uh, due to some transmission error, it will again get uh, reflected because uh, the external, if your external sync uh, is not proper, if you will tune uh, your DPS to the standard value, it will get uh, uh, sometimes or after some time. So your external sync source uh, should be proper uh, so that uh, uh, we can keep this uh, backward value uh, as per our.